Hi, welcome to part two of my video on uh, reverse engineering this uh, battery monitor in hopes of putting this on my own network. Um, I'm doing this for my boat, but it could be on any system. Um, I think one real good application would be for a um, solar project of any sort, whether that be for a boat or RV or, or home or any type of thing like that. But anything that involves batteries of any chemistry. So in the first, um, in part one, I talked about this, uh, uh, showed a little bit about this this system, the, the Juntuk uh, VAT1300. Um, and in there I pointed out um, one of the issues behind being able to hook this up to your own network is these radio modules. So these radio modules are uh, Chinese clones um, and they're not compatible with the authentic modules, um, the NRF24 L01 pluses. So um, what I'm going to do today is just real quick show you how um, I went about replacing them, but there's certainly lots of options on doing that. Um, but if you're not experienced with the solder rework, you may find this um, somewhat helpful. So first off, let me talk about a little bit about um, what I some low-cost solutions for um, soldering. This is a TS100. Um, I got this one for forty dollars off of um, Banggood.com, and it comes uh, just just the tip, just the, the the iron with the with the tip, and the tip is a uh, perfectly adequate tip for for smaller rework type things. There are other tips you can you can order for this. Um, I've got three additional ones. Um, a slightly heavier duty one uh, with a very small spade on the end of it. Uh, it's a D24. Uh, I picked that up off of Amazon for $16. There's an even heavier dutier one, uh, which is a C4, which I also got for $16. And then this large uh, spatula type one. If you notice, it's a different uh, form factor. Um, and this is actually for a... Um, for um, Hacko um, soldering iron, um, but they happen to be compatible with um, with this iron. The only difference is if you notice the length, um, the length is different. But other than that, they do work, um, and they're not quite as ergonomically nice to use. Some folks have, um, I think you can actually probably buy them um, a uh, handle that slips down over the edge. But nonetheless, um, let's talk a little bit more about um, how to go about doing this. Actually, bring out another point about this. Um, this this has uh, some open source firmware for it that you can um, load. Um, this, the stock firmware is perfectly good, but the, the, the uh, open source firmware brings you some additional features. Um, one of the features it brings you is, is the ability to be able to hook up. Um, you can do it off the stock ones with the stock firmware, but you the same 5s uh, lithium pack that I have here um, you can run this off of it but what the, the what the firmware on here does it'll actually detect the voltage here it has a voltage monitor on here and it'll actually uh, cut out shut down when this battery voltage gets to a, a preset point so that you don't overly deplete these, which is bad for uh, lithium polymer batteries. So anyway, that being said, um, let's go about replacing the, this, these modules. And one thing I also didn't mention in my last video is uh, another advantage for uh, taking out these uh, Chinese clones and putting in the authentic modules is um, one of the complaints about this, these, these Juntek modules is they don't have a very good uh, the distance, um, the communication distance is not good. Um, I noticed when I put in the authentic modules that it got dramatically, dramatically better. So um, even if you don't plan on putting this on a network, um, it's probably not a bad thing to do. So um, let's take this tip off and I'm going to put this uh, big spatula one on instead. Um, and we'll go ahead and 
hook this up. Now, we have a couple options for taking this off. Um, given that we're not going to be reusing this module, one method would be to just desolder it from the top and then, and then uh, take this bolt board off and pull the pins out individually. That's probably the safest method. Um, but um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and, and pull it off the way you would normally do it if you were removing a, a component and, and, and leave it intact. Um, the other thing that we can do is um, a couple different options for, for um, removing the module. Um, actually, several different options. One would be to solder wick um, this out, which, which is, an, is an option. Um, the problem with solder wicking out some, something that has multiple through holes is very difficult to get every last little bit of solder out of there. So this has uh, eight pins, so even if you got you know, most all the solder out of all eight pins, there's bound to be a few of these that are still hung up. So basically the best method is, is to heat the whole thing up and get it all out simultaneously. The other thing of note, um, too, is, is these are uh, most all electronics these days is assembled with lead-free lead solder. It's not quite as easy to work with um, as uh, 60-40 tin lead solder. And that's what I use on everything is 60-40. And um, that has um, uh, lots of a, lots, of, it's just plain easier to work with. And even if, you, if you're working with a, a board with lead-free, uh, lead if you add a little bit of leaded solder, it makes it a little bit easier to work with. Um, the other thing that helps sometimes is, is uh, flux when you're working on something. So to apply flux, uh, helps but another thing it does by applying more solder that's really what's this is resin core solder so by using it um, um, it gets along so this is a fairly large spatula um, one that would be smaller would be better but I'm just going to go ahead and use this guy um, the other thing that this has that the firmware provides is a turbo mode that I can actually um, apply more heat to this thing and sometimes add a little bit of, of solder to your iron before you get going is a good idea. So we'll get this flowing. And you see it's already popping out. Add a little more solder to it. And out it comes. Okay, to um, take the solder off here, we got a couple options. Um, one would be use a solder sucker. Um, the other would be solder wick. Um, you can actually heat heat the board up and then bang it um, and sometimes it'll force things out, force things out. Um, but um, what um, I'm going to use is uh, we'll try it with the solder sucker and then we'll try solder wick I'll show you a little bit of both so pause the video and get my oh here it is right here Let's try that guy right there. So that worked quite well. Actually sucked solder out of two, so I might just co um, try a couple more with this and then I'll show you with solder wick as well.
and that worked quite well. I got all four of those out. Now let's try solder wick. This solder wick actually has some uh, rosin in it, um, but it doesn't hurt to add a little more to it. Um, or you can even add a little bit of uh, rosin directly to the board. Kind of makes it a little messier, um, but it um, will clean up just fine afterwards. And I like to continue to use the spade and kind of wipe across it. Um, that cleared out one of the holes. Sometimes have to come at it from both sides. Believe it or not, sometimes actually adding solder um, helps. And because these are through holes, that's why the solder sucker works so well, because um, it actually sucked the solder right through the system. I think that's what I'm going to do is go ahead and continue to use the solder sucker since that works so well. I did clear out one of the holes completely with the solder wick, but it's got the solder just halfway in between there and it just doesn't want to uh, wick out of there. There, so they're all cleaned out now. Let me unplug this. And up it comes. So we've got this reworked. I'm going to leave. Um, I'm going to leave this guy apart for now because, as I mentioned, I, I need to get some washers back behind here and actually need to mount this in my boat. Um, so I'm not going to put it together yet because um, I need. I'll need to torque it down. So we'll cover that um, potentially in another video. Um, so part three. We'll talk about um, the uh, coating and uh, a little bit about the work so far done with an Arduino and uh, we'll go over some of those details. So this uh, concludes, so we'll see you next time.